So I've had a little bit of a tough week and I thought it'd be fun to cap off the week with a little code kata. And I wanted to create a sprint name generator in Angular. Uh, at work, we've started organizing our weeks into sprints as opposed to just working across a Kanban board. And uh, every week we name the sprint, which is kind of fun. Um, so I thought, let's create a sprint name generator. And it works by selecting a random description and a random animal. And let's go ahead and generate a new sprint name. Adorable skimmer, spoiled curacao, spotless anteater, gigantic albatross, external zebroid, kind of fun. Um, and what you can see is that every time a name gets generated, it gets logged to the console here, external zebroid, and uh, attempted to copy to the clipboard. So let's just generate another one. Good cow, and you'll see if I paste, I have good cow automatically in the clipboard. Um, and we'll just try another one. Awful piranha, awful piranha. All right, so let's take a look at the code, because it's actually fairly simple. As flashy as the UI feels, uh, the underlying code is actually pretty small. So here's the app component, and uh, I'm pulling in a list of descriptions and a list of things. I'll be honest, I spent about 90% of my time just compiling these lists, which was actually a lot of fun and really only about 10% of the time building the actual demo. And you'll see that the code's actually fairly small. So essentially we have our list of descriptions and our list of things. And all we're really doing is creating or picking a random index from the description and a random index from the things and we're concatenating them to create a sprint name, right? So when I call generate name, which is the same thing that's happening when we click this button here, uh, that is generating in those random indexes. Um, and internally, all it's doing is making sure it doesn't pick the same index twice in a row. The sprint name is then the concatenated value from those two different indices and sharing the sprint name with the user. If we jump down to that, all that does is do the logging and attempt to copy the value to the clipboard, um, which you can look at on your own. Uh, the HTML for this is also fairly minimal. I'm just using a little flexbox action to uh, have my two lists here. Uh, each list you can see is just an unordered list and all of the, the skimming across the UI, right? So when I generate one and we get this little animation here, all that really is is a translate Y that is dynamic based on the particular index. So you can see here that each one of these items or each list is translated Y by some multiple of 85. And 85 is just the height of this UI, right? So if I click here, you can see that the CSS for this line item, and you can see all the line items there in the background, uh, is 85. So all we're doing essentially is offsetting the list by a negative value so as to shift all of these up such that uh, the part here which has overflow hidden, uh, only shows the particular item uh, that's in the non-truncated portion of that view, right? So that's all we're doing. So we have the two lists, the list of descriptions, the list of animals. Each one of these lists is being offset by some negative multiple of the line height of each item. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, the CSS for this, again, also quite simple. Here you can see, again, the line height is going to be 85. Uh, I'm making judicious use of Flexbox. And uh, the only other thing that's kind of interesting here is by default, uh, the text selection is not available unless it's the selected item. And you can see that the selected item here is based on the index. So if the index in the list matches the index in our view model, that item is selectable. And I did that so that you could theoretically now come in here and copy this. And under the hood, it would normally copy like everything in that particular list. But if I copy and paste, you'll see I only get the direct goose. Now, because they're in different lists, um, it's adding a line break. I couldn't figure out how to get rid of the line break. Uh, but again, this is in the, I don't know why I can't delete that. There we go. It already gets copied to the clipboard. Anyway, so that was just a lot of fun. Um, I think we get like a really nice experience here with actually quite a tiny amount of CSS and HTML and app component logic. And uh, all together, it's, it works out pretty nicely. And it's just kind of fun to see these 
uh, names come across. Peaceful Mudskipper, Serene Ferret, Cruel Siskin. I don't even know what half these animals are. Serious Chipmunk, Quaint Reindeer. I don't know, I could just do this all day. Irresponsible Chameleon. What's that guy up to? I don't know. Anyway, uh, just fun. Good, good palate cleanser. Nice cap on the week.